Model 3 lines are under construction. Bjorn Nealand shows us his ultra-white seats. We have some patent news and a couple of bits of miscellany. Here are your Tesla tidbits for April 24th, 2017. We have a bunch of quick hitters from over the weekend. We kick off at Electric, where their paperwork wizards have uncovered permits confirming the construction of Model 3 assembly lines, among other things. The Model 3 goodness was culled from permits containing a reference to adding, quote, GA3 subassembly conveyors and lifts, end quote. Electric believes that the GA part there means General Assembly 3 for Model 3. Next up are references to adding equipment to BIW3, which they believe means Body in White 3 for Model 3. Lastly, we have work on Body Line 3, quote, Body Line 3 Robot Anchorage Foundation and Anchorage and Egress, end quote. But then we get an odd little mention about supercharging. The permit reads, quote, Tesla Automated Parking Superchargers Phase 1, end quote. More digging by Electrek unearthed a patent that may explain this. The idea would be rolling up to a bay where an automated system would connect to the bottom of the car and could be able to provide a higher speed charging than today because it could also help cool the battery during charging rather than relying solely on the car to do so. The patent describes the connection thusly, quote, An initial signal from the vehicle to the charging station is transmitted by wireless communication, e.g. Bluetooth, and this serves to couple the vehicle to the charging station. In response, the appropriate vehicle charger connections can be established, including an electrical connection for the charging, and in some implementations, a fluid connection for thermally conditioning the vehicle during the charging. Then, a temperature demand signal or any other form of thermal information can be sent to the charging station via signal wire in the electrical conductor, end quote. Living here in the Northeast, I'd be curious if they plan to have a door covering the connectors that would open when the signal is sent. Because trust and believe, in the winter, those connections would be caked with snow and ice otherwise. Tesla folk are smart, though, so I'm sure they've considered this. Obviously, a patent filing is no guarantee of anything coming to market, though. So just bear in mind that this all may be nothing more than brainstorming that they want the rights to. A frequent reaction I get from friends and family when I tell them I want white seats in my Model 3 is, quote, holy crap, aren't those going to get stained easily with your kids, end quote. I usually then parrot the Elon line that these are the best seats to have with children since he has five of them, saying it actually performed better than the other colors on stain tests and move on. But we really haven't gotten a great look at the white seats under heavy use until now. Inside EVs gives us an older video from popular Tesla YouTuber Bjorn Nielen that I missed when he released it originally, showing us his Model X with white seats after 30,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers of use. As was the fear of many, buying new blue jeans and wearing them in the car before washing is not a good idea. Bjorn shows us the discolored seats, but also shows us a leather cleaning solution recommended to him by a Tesla employee. While it seems like it took him some considerable effort, the solution did a heck of a job in my opinion, and the blue is barely noticeable to me. He also is able to point us to some wear and tear on his perforated seats, which are no longer an option. So for those who need to see how the ultra white holds up, this is definitely the video for you. I'll personally be sticking with the white myself after seeing the video. If you can easily clean them and basically get them back to near new after 30,000 miles, I'm still game. Sticking with Inside EVs, they show us what is probably a very little-known feature courtesy of a video from Tesla Inventory Search. Turns out, newer cars have some extra sensors in the back seats. Due to this, if a passenger in the back seat is not buckled up, the car now throws a warning that they're not. This is super useful for those of us with children who decide that they're not buckling up or are unbuckling during a drive. It gives us a warning that shenanigans are afoot in the back seat and they better get buckled up before we pull the car over. Lastly tonight, the folks at the Tesla Geeks channel on YouTube posted a video of launches in the P100D with the ludicrous mode Easter egg enabled. Even without seeing stats, I think watching the outside lets us see that hunkering down into launch mode gives us a significant boost in the speed compared to just tromping on the accelerator. While the reactions aren't as extreme as some I've seen in the past, it's still about 7 minutes of smiling. It's definitely worth a look. You can find the links to today's full stories in the show description. This show operates on a value-for-value value model. If you get some value out of what I do each day, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash tesla to bits. 
Many thanks to super patrons John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, Cookie UK, and John Waller for supporting the show at the $10 plus level. Thanks also to Guy Albanus for becoming a first-time supporter as well. As I always say, if you have nothing extra to spare, it's no big deal. Feel free to support the show with your positive feedback and subscriptions on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and other services across the internet. Lastly, if you're in the market for a Tesla, you can get yourself a thousand bucks off while supporting the show and super patron Drew Schuyler by using the referral link ts.la slash andrew1233. That's all for today. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.